what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now. From the beginning. Hit it, boys. and welcome to the Nautis X9 webinar. My name is Thomas Lofblad, and I'm the CEO of Handheld Group, and I'll be hosting this webinar today together with Johan Heed, our Director of Product Management. And today we're introducing the new and improved Nautis X9. Uh, the Nautis X9 has been a product that's been with us for uh, about three years. We started a new platform development about a year ago for this product, and today we're going to be showing it to you and, and uh, letting you know all the speeds and feeds of the new platform. We've chosen to keep the form factor the same with the product as it has been previously, but basically everything inside uh, is new. During this webinar, <clears throat> it will take about half an hour, 25 minutes. Throughout the webinar, you're going to have a Q&A section. If you point at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a Q&A and two uh, bubbles. You can post questions there throughout the presentation. Johan and I will try to answer them as, as quickly as possible. We'll also make sure to stick around afterwards um, to answer any questions you might have, or you can contact us after the presentation as well, or contact your, your uh, regular sales representative. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Johan, who's going to start presenting the product and uh, letting you know everything about it. Speak to you in a bit. Bye-bye. Thank you, uh, Thomas, for that introduction. And um, very warm welcome, everyone, to the uh, Nautis X9 webinar. So as uh, Thomas said, we, uh, we are uh, here presenting the upgraded version of the Nautis X9, or generation two of the Nautis X9, if, if you so will. Um, so when we started this development a uh, little bit more than a year ago, we uh, we know this was a very, it's a popular product. It's been doing very well in the market. And uh, one of the key features of the product, product is its ruggedness. So uh, when looking at upgrading the device or, or doing something new here, uh, first thing was to keep the ultra ruggedness um, that we've had been, yeah, uh, been received very well. So we wanted to keep that. Of course, inside there is a lot of uh, uh, performance uh, upgrades uh, possible, and that was needed as well. We must say, we have uh, the uh, CPU, which has been an older version. It was uh, 1.2 gigahertz, so a little bit slow for some applications. We've upgraded RAM and storage. We have improved some field connectivity and versatility. We have, of course, upgraded the Android system to Android 11. And then we also added a layer of Android Enterprise Recommended. We'll spend some time on this. Uh, and of course, accessories is always important of a product like this. So we made sure, since we're keeping the same form factor, we're continuing with the accessories that we have. They're fully compatible with this second generation of the Nautilus X9. And we can continue to build on that existing ecosystem of, of accessories. Finally, I'll also talk about the Mexico switch, which opens up possibilities for these, uh, for our handle devices, uh, ways where you can stage devices, you can easily manage devices, uh, troubleshoot devices, uh, very helpful tools uh, to, to have better control of the devices uh, and uh, make sure the, the process outside uh, or in the field is, is uh, as smooth as possible. 
So first thing first, uh, as with all our products, they all have a purpose. When we look at a device, we uh, we have devices like the Nautilus X2, the Nautilus X41 as well, with rear expansion capabilities, for example. Uh, the Nautilus X41 has a keypad. With the Nautilus X9, as you know, perhaps from the first generation Nautilus X9, it's truly designed for ruggedness. It's the most rugged PDA together with our Nautilus X8 device. And a lot of it comes from the uh, magnesium frame. Uh, so we have a magnesium alloy frame design within the device. You probably saw that in the video that the, the, in the inside, the way it is, the PCB is mounted on is on a magnesium frame, which makes it very durable, uh, both against vibrations, but also against uh, shock impact like props, et cetera. So that was a key feature uh, when updating the Nautic 9 to keep that ruggedness. So same, same footprint, same housing. We have some make, we've made some tuning, some updates, minor ones, but nothing you will notice from, from an outside. We are drop testing it against 1.5 meters. Size is identical to the uh, previous version and uh, weight is a little bit less than, than 400 grams. So uh, also very similar to the uh, first generation. When looking at the environmental uh, specifications, uh, we are MIL standard A10G uh, certified with the device. I mentioned a couple of ones up here, but in addition to that, we, we also make sure it's IP67. So like a truly, especially the fully rugged device like the Nautilus X9, then IP65, IP67, the highest uh, rating that we, that we uh, certify for, meaning fully protected against water as well as dust. And then we have functional altitudes up to 4,500 meters as well. The uh, second part of, uh, of the environmental test I would, I would like to mention, point out here is the temperature. So we do have projects where the, uh, the NOS 69 is used in, uh, in warehousing and freezes, et cetera, where it's uh, rather cold. So uh, that is an important feature that we wanted to keep, of course. The operating temperatures within out 69 is from minus 20 Celsius to plus 55 Celsius, and storage from minus 30 to plus 65. So you can say when we're doing the upgrade, yes, we definitely want to beef up the performance and do a lot of improvements and upgrades. But at the same time, we carried on. There's not a lot of changes on the ruggedness uh, because it's been received very well uh, what we had. So we decided to, to keep most of those environmental, environmental specification with, with carrying on with the same housing of the device. So that's the, that's the outside, that's the, the, the ruggedness. Looking inside, and so what have we done? Well, display size, five inch, still the same display size, um, also same resolution. So no change on the resolution. Um, it's a high bright display protected by a Dragon Trail glass. So Dragon Trail is a form of chemically strengthened glass. Normally you can say that there are, you're probably familiar with Gorilla Glass, you've heard that term before. And, and Dragon Trail Glass is another brand. We use Gorilla Glass on some of our devices. Dragon Trail has some little bit different characteristics, but very similar in doing the same thing, basically enhanced, uh, chemically enhanced for uh, withstanding both drops, but also scratch and, and, uh, and shock impact uh, to be as durable as, uh, as possible. The display then, sunlight readable, we achieved this uh, through different methods. One is to increase the, uh, the display brightness. So we have a high brightness display. And then on top of that, it's also optically bonded. And so these two things combined makes it a, a well good performance um, good performance auto, which is of course important for a, a device like this that is designed to be used outside uh, in, with field workers. Another important feature for a device like this is the uh, touch controller. Um, and the touch controller can be tuned in different ways. We have a multi-touch controller uh, that is also tuned for rain or glove mode. Basically what that means is that the touch controller can then be tuned to detect, okay, what is the, what is the finger, where is the raindrops? And to a certain extent on a capacitive screen, 
you can prevent it to react from reacting to water droplets and only react to uh, to real finger input. And then with the glove mode, it's actually the opposite. You tune up the uh, sensitivity of the touch controller, so it reacts easily for uh, for the uh, for uh, less uh, uh, lesser signals, so it can detect fingers through a glove, for example. So both of these modes are available and supported on the Note 6.9. So of course, the key part of why we're doing an upgrade, we have the Note 6.9, it's been working great, but we also recognize that we are lacking performance, right? So the previous generation has a 1.2 gigahertz processor. So with these uh, upgraded board level, uh, we are upgrading to the MediaTek 8768, which has eight cores, uh, which four cores are at two gigahertz for the high performance applications. and four cores are at lower uh, CPU and 1.5 gigahertz. And the, the reason behind this is for less CPU intensive applications can run at the lower frequency and thereby extending the runtime and uh, consume less energy and, 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 uh, and battery. And then the higher CPU intensive applications and, uh, uh, and programs can then use the uh, more cores, but also the higher CPUs, uh, CPU cores up to two gigahertz for, for that high performance. So when we compare them side by side, uh, it's a drastic difference. You, you'll see that, that this is uh, it's super fast um, and running even heavy uh, CPU intensive applications handling those very well, something that the uh, old generation did not at a certain level. You start, they started to choke a little bit. So definitely notice a huge difference on the uh, CPU performance side, which is the main focus really on this upgrade. To support this, we are uh, adding three gigabyte of RAM and 32 gigabyte of storage. And we also have a 4,800 milliamp hour field replaceable battery. So on the rear side, you have a battery uh, cover, which is uh, locked with one latch and you open that latch and then there's the, uh, the battery cells are beneath that latch in, in the battery compartment. Looking at sensors, we are keeping the sensors that we've had, so there's no change on the sensor side. There are, I should say that, there are changes uh, with some improvements. So there are some minor upgrades and updates on the uh, model numbers of the sensors, but in, in general, we, we support the same type of sensor. So we have an e-compass accelerometer. We have a gyroscope pressure sensor, uh, proximity sensor, as well as the ambient light sensor for, for the display. So all these sensors were also available on the first generation and on this new generation, Note 6.9, we, we are keeping support, of course, with the same sensors, and some of them are updated to the newer, better standards, some a little bit faster uh, as well. And lastly, I, I want to mention the programmable keys. This is something we have seen on all our devices, I should say, um, be, being quite attractive that we do have pro programmable function keys. So you can, when you develop your applications, we have software developers uh, uh, developing applications where they want a trigger key, for example, uh, to, uh, to trigger a key event for their application. And you can use then the programmable side keys or volume keys and tie them to a certain action within your application. And this is something that we're updating here. This is not available right now, but for your information, we will look over this programmable keys, uh, key SDK from our side uh, in, in the upcoming weeks. And, and uh, starting in Q1, we will see changes on all our products here, especially in new product releases, where we've had a bit of a fragmentation among our PDAs, the way programmable keys are accessed. And we are making some major improvements on the software level on our side so that the uh, programmable keys are then accessed in, in a similar way on all our PDAs, or the same way, I should say, even. Uh, so this is a huge step forward for us where to lessen the fragmentation and, and find uh, compatibility among our handle devices where one application developed for, for example, Nauta 6.9 or the Nauta 6.2 can then be uh, run equally well on uh, with maybe just minor modification for a different trigger key be able to work fine on an Auto 641 as well, for example. So this is something that we are working on uh, behind the scene that you will see updates on uh, in upcoming weeks and months. 
So other specifications that are updated. Uh, so besides the performance, which is of course the key running application, this is a device really focused on running applications uh, and uh, uh, and and yeah, software focused uh, device. So you have the ruggedness, you have the display running software data collector with the barcode scanner. And together with that, we have a rear uh, facing camera, 30 megapixel. We have a front facing camera of five megapixel. We have a micro USB. This is something we have kept uh, on this device. The first generation also has micro USB. Uh, we've done some improvements. Here's a new connected type, etc. cetera. It's still micro USB for, for charging then and data and the data link to a PC. And the reason, one of the reasons then is to keep that compatibility with the old first generation device. If you have those deployed, uh, mixing up chargers is not ideal. So for this upgrade, we decided to, to keep with that. We made some, some changes, but uh, keeping the micro USB then for, for charting and, and data link. And then we also have on the bottom, we have the docking connector for desktop dock, uh, we have a rear connector for the pistol grip. We have 3.5 millimeter headset jack at the top, which is used by some, of course. And then underneath the battery on the rear side, then we have SD card slot. So if the 32 gigabyte of storage is not enough, we have the possibility of uh, expanding the storage with the micro SD card. And with the newer Android system, you can also have this fully encrypted as well for security reasons. And lastly, here we also have two SIM cards. So dual SIM, something we have on the first generation, and that will carry over here to the new generation now to 6.9. So keeping two uh, SIM card slots as well. There are some uh, updates on the positioning. Uh, we now support GPS GLONASS as well as Galileo. And we also support the correction uh, satellites, uh, uh, SPAS satellites. Uh, so uh, together with that chip and the... Uh, a dedicated antenna. So with the Nautis X9, we have a dedicated ceramic antenna uh, at the top, uh, 10 by 10 millimeters, uh, I believe it is. So this is something that the first generation had as well. And we have definitely received good feedback on the performance and uh, how well it's been working. So of course, something we have, uh, we have kept on this uh, new generation Nautis X9 as well for good GNSS performance. So looking at the uh, communication side, we, uh, with this software, the, the, uh, or with the hardware uh, is great, but then also gives us the possibility of running newer software. And the base for all software is of course the operating system. And with the Nautis X9, this is our second device running Android 11. Like with all our PDA devices here, the newer PDA devices, there are GMS certified, which is Google Mobility Services. So you have the layer of, of a, a Google verification on top of Android 11. And uh, on top of that, we also have the Android Enterprise recommended. So with the new Android 11, we have improved speed, we have improved power management, and there's also some security levels updated as well. So this is something that you will see when you, if you have applications running, for example, the, especially the old, if you've been running on Nautis X9 and using Android 7, for example, or even Android 9, which some of our devices have had, when you update to Android 11, you'll see that the some application asking for permission and so on. So this is something, a couple of new security uh, features or, or methods implemented Android 11 that they, they're more they're more focused on permission levels so and they handle a little bit differently so it's always a good thing to try out and run the application and see how it runs on on the device uh, they are definitely improvements uh, but it could also be some adjustments unnecessary in on the application side uh, some permissions that may be added that are not necessary they can be removed could also be uh, just to know how the application works and see if you get a pop-up for any permission requests, et cetera. It's, it's always good to check because there has been, on the security side, there has been some updates on, on permission level uh, when updating to Android 11. So we talked about the Android 11, GMS, and then on top of that, we have Android Enterprise Recommended, which is great for, it's, it's kind of a quality stamp. It's a set of test suite that Google go through as additional tests on top of the GMS for enterprise features. Um, so it's not only testing 
enterprise features, but it's also implementing new features. This is, uh, uh, some of them has to do with the improved um, functionality uh, for enterprise users, but also for deployment. And a lot of focus is on deployment, uh, zero touch deployment, for example, so that you don't, you can access in the most common largest MDM, uh, SODI, for example, without having to access and go into the device to be able to stage the device. You can actually stage the device without uh, having to open up each device and, and get into the system. And this is mostly for larger deployments, uh, but it can also be used with, with smaller deployments as well. Uh, with with another on top of this, we have another layer, which is our handle Mexico suite. I will come back to the Mexico suite a little bit later, but just for information that we have the GMS, we have the AER, and on top of that, we also have the handle Mexico suite. And the whole reason why we're doing all this is because we want to make the devices as secure uh, as possible, and also give the the ability and possibility for partners uh, and and customers to manage the devices easily control the devices when necessary to secure them and keep them updated. With the uh, Handle Mexico uh, app, you can push out updates and control which devices should be updated and whatnot. Uh, with the Mexico manager, you can view status, health, uh, RF capabilities, uh, battery status, temperature, et cetera. So there's a lot of uh, useful tools and applications that you can use within the Mexico suite. To, to make sure that devices are, are smoothly running, which is in the end uh, what we want. We want the customer's applications uh, to work flawless, of course. Looking more on the communication side, we have Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, so supporting A, B, G, N, as well as the AC standard. Uh, we support Bluetooth 5.0, low energy. We support NFC. Uh, and looking at the cellular side, 2G, 3G, and 4G as well. We support a lot of the, uh, the bands. So when it comes to the 4G coverage, we are focused on uh, some lower frequency bands and some higher frequency bands. The, um, if we look at in rural or in city areas where speed often is important, especially for consumer side and computer, consumer devices, Speed is very important. That's where the higher frequencies come in, and uh, we support some of those. Uh, but our key, fo key focus area with this type of device is out in the rural areas, uh, forestry uh, or field service. Uh, and those typically are covered by lower frequency. Lower frequencies reach longer distances. So this is more commonly used to get those distances because you're out in the field your any coverage is better than than uh, no coverage uh, so it's more about having any coverage at all in many cases and and there we support the uh, the lower frequency band so we we think we have a good mix of bands um, and i go not going to go into each each band and the details of it you have them there you can also view them in the data sheet uh, but our aim is to cover the main bands globally in all countries and then on top of that, um, we add some of those high-speed bands as well for fast connectivity. Lastly, I want to say a few words about the Mexico suite. It's designed for quick custom setups, as I said, uh, and it's for secure experience with, with the Mexico uh, staging in Mexico uh, over their update services. And this is something that works on all our handle Android devices. So besides the Mexico staging and Mexico manager that I've talked a little bit about, the, the other services that we provide is the handle over the air update services. And all these services are implemented by default on the device. They can be used. The OTAP is obviously uh, used for updating the device and the manager and staging are there uh, installed on the device, but not used unless you want it, of course, but they're there for, for you to access if you, if you decide to, to use them. With the handled over the air update service, we uh, were able to securely uh, push out updates. So we push out bug fixes, feature updates. We recently had an update on the barcode scanners configuration settings, which we pushed out. Uh, so this is our way of, uh, of pushing out both updates, but also, of course, bug fixes and security updates in, in general. 
So uh, this is something in our service that is fully controlled on, on handle side, and we, we decide and, and control how these updates are, are pushed out, uh, which makes it uh, uh, yeah, secured uh, and also uh, fast responding uh, to, uh, to any updates that we, that we need to push out. So that's a little bit on the Maxco. Uh, with the Nautilus X9, we have the CE certification, FCC and IC. So CE for Europe, of course, FCC and IC for North America, and RCM for Australia and New Zealand. We have GMS Google Mobility Services for Android 11. And on top of that, we also have the Android Enterprise Recommendation uh, certification on the Nautilus X9. When it comes to the MIL standard A10G, um, I'm not going to go into details. I mentioned a couple of them earlier with the temperatures and the drop and the vibrations and the, uh, the full details on procedures and methods. You can read about that in the data sheet. And of course, as always, let us know. Talk to your sales representative if you have, uh, if you have questions on those. Well, finally, before I hand it back over to Thomas, I, I want to talk a little bit about, about accessories. One of the key things and the, the benefit of keeping the form factor is to continue to build on the success that we've had, uh, continue to build uh, on the accessories that we have. So if you currently have installment of the vehicle docks and vehicles, for example, you can use this upgraded Nautis X9 and it's plug and play with existing vehicle docks. So that goes for all the accessories uh, for this device. We have carry cases, wrist mounts, a range of pole mounts, various solutions. We have the pistol grip for the Nautis X9. Uh, so there's a lot of accessories that have been available. They are still available for the Nautis X9. On the right-hand side here, you see the, uh, the uh, wrist mount, which, is, which has been upgraded as well. So this is the new version where you have a swirling uh, swirling feature of the device. You can actually turn that around, the display. So the device can be angled in any way you want. And on top of that, we add a Bluetooth trigger finger. So you can use the, your fingers to activate the, the barcode scanner with, through a ring button scanner, basically. Uh, this is something we've had on one of our other devices. And now we're adding that to Nato 69 and some other devices as well. So this is a new uh, addition to the accessory family that uh, we think is quite interesting. Looking at the other accessories, of course, we have the vehicle dock, we have the desktop dock for charging, hand strap, wrist mount, stylus pen, of course, carry cases, a couple of different versions, screen protector and pole mounts as well. We, I must say that we're quite good working with our uh, developers uh, and partners to develop accessories that are requested and needed. So don't hesitate to have conversations with us. If you have projects or ideas uh, of, uh, of accessories, talk to us uh, on, on some projects and opportunities. If what we have is not ideal, maybe we can work together and, uh, and, uh, and recommend or find solutions together. This is, we like the collaboration. So don't, don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, for, for these type of, uh, of accessories and, and assistance. So that's what I have. This is the Nautis uh, X9. It looks like the first generation because there's really no change on uh, that you can see from the outside. There are a couple of, of smaller tweaks and updates, but nothing, uh, nothing major. I want to point out a few things here. This is my last slide before handing it back over to Thomas. So on the left side here, we have a trigger for the barcode scanner. We have a trigger also on the other side. So we have two barcode scanner triggers for left-handed or right-handed. They can also be then tailored made for, for any other operation. And there on the rear side, we don't have data connectivity through these pins, but it's for pistol grip activation also to trigger the uh, barcode scanner. So a couple of different ways of uh, triggering that barcode scanner in addition to then to the wireless Bluetooth trigger that we now have available. And at the top, you see the uh, dedicated barcode scanner here. It's the Honeywell 6703. We have a dedicated GNSS antenna, ceramic antenna on this side, uh, headphone jack. And at the bottom here, this side, you have the uh, data connectivity as well as charging through a, a docking station. Great. This is the Nautis X9, new generation. 
Uh, hope you guys like it. We really beefed up the performance. So uh, I know some of you be happy to see that. So uh, with that said, I will hand it back over to Thomas. He will talk a little bit about availability and round things off. So thank you again for, for attending and, and listening. And uh, yeah, feel free. If you have questions, let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johan, for the presentation. Um, and I hope you all are as excited about the product as we are. Uh, we think it's a, it's a great addition and uh, we're building on the success of the product where the X9 has really been uh, excelling in really, really tough environments and, and challenging environments. So we're quite pleased with, uh, with that. Um, we're, start, we're planning to start shipping the product on December 13th, so in a little bit uh, less than two weeks or two weeks from yesterday. Um, having said that, though, uh, at, at the, the current state of the world and shipments and, and uh, whatnot, it, it may be a couple of days late, but it's uh, uh, definitely going to be available before Christmas time. So it will start shipping within a couple of weeks. Um, and lastly, I would like to thank everyone, all our customers um, and, and reselling partners for, uh, for this year. For sure, it's been a challenging year with the uh, pandemic and also for, from our point of view with, uh, with a component shortage or semiconductor shortage, which definitely has affected our, our business and our industry and our ability to develop and deliver products in, in a timely manner. But we managed to pull, pull through and we've, we've done a, a really nice year. Uh, thanks uh, a lot to, uh, to you, our partners and, and, and customers. So I'd like to thank you for that. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, continue to, uh, to uh, ask them in the, in the Q&A section. If not, then let your um, sales representative know or contact myself or contact Johan online, and then we'll do uh, whatever we can to help you out. Thank you very much for attending today. We look forward to continue doing business with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.